All right, so uh, hello everyone watching this, or maybe even listening to this. Um, I'm Andrew, and um, I'm recording my... Uh, <laughs> I'm doing a screencast, essentially. I'm recording my screen, and I'm just uh, talking to you via my microphone. And uh, in just a second, I'm going to start this uh, live stream on StageHound. This is a very odd a way to handle a podcast and I hope that it will be turned into a podcast at least it will be a video recording available later so I'm going to show you how the process works from from the back end so I'm the host and I'm going to try out this new platform called Stagehound uh, which I myself am new to I talked to Craig here he is um, a few times and he showed me around a little bit and I just really liked it and I wanted to try it, but I intentionally didn't prepare uh, and I didn't, uh, and <laughs> it sounds awful, I didn't um, prepare in any particular way. So I'm going to just uh, start this sh uh, the, the uh, online stream, talk to Craig who will be there and discuss it with him and see uh, how the platform works and, and uh, how it can be useful for musicians. So. Creating the event took me around five seconds. It was very straightforward. And now I'm doing the start event thing. I opened a few YouTube um, links here because I'm. Uh, you will know why later. <laughs> and okay, so we start with something I didn't expect. Um, Here we go. We spin as test in stage hound. Should be good. And submit. Um, let's do a Twitter share. Uh, I will not do it because if just a couple of minutes before starting this recording, I actually shared it on Twitter as well already. So um, Here yeah, I am. So I intentionally didn't turn on the. Um, I didn't turn on a video recording from my camera because I knew that I would be sh shown here. Um. All right. So here, here we go. Uh, <laughs> Craig, I really like. Uh, DJ Trippy Dog name. I just I didn't tell you earlier, but this is just brilliant. Um, so let's let's take a look around. First, I'm going to um, just uh, look into different sections that we've got here. And um, oh, so here we go. You see, Corey, Corey, hello. Uh, I hope you can hear me all right write something in the chat box and uh, just so you guys know what's going on I'm recording a screencast simultaneously so I'm kind of commenting on the whole thing it's like it's very meta um, so I'm going to invite Craig to to the stage and uh, and just so we have a conversation but before then once again, uh, let's let's take a look into what we've got here. Uh, here in the middle, we've got uh, a, a section where media can be streamed. So we will test that. For that reason, I opened uh, several YouTube um, pages here. Here we've got uh, topic. We can change that. Here we have uh, someone I'm I'm having a conversation with. So I'm inviting on stage. We'll test that and broadcast obviously is visible only to me and here we've got questions which I can answer um, so yeah um, can we yeah it's already favorite um, I want to hear from Greg directly. 
Okay, so this is interesting. So that's interesting. So I gave uh, Craig the opportunity to ask questions in this section. I don't want to end the conversation right now. So what I'm, I want to do is to invite Craig on the stage. Yeah, can you please do that? Because I think you initiate that. So let's see, I'm a host. You asked me a question. I saw the question in uh, the lower um, uh, left corner. And um, by the way, let me enable tips. That's pretty cool, gosh. Um, and uh, I just, yeah, invited Craig to ask the question. And uh, I'm answering the question here. And you see, I just click that button here, which is supposed to bring DJ Trippy Dog on stage, isn't it? Guys, <laughs> so it's so interesting because I mean, I told you, uh, oh yes, yes, here we go. It's. Uh, for, for a second, I started to feel kind of stressful just uh, talking to myself here and I really, I really needed you here. So, well, Andrew, you know, I was, I was actually there. You actually brought me up on stage. Mm -hmm. You brought me up on stage, but I was just, I was, I was just typing messages to you. Um, so, you know, what we've seen with people using the platform, you know, there's, a, I think there's a certain comfort level. Some people have a certain comfort level with video, some don't. Um, and what we found is many times, uh, the host is perfectly comfortable on camera, uh, but the, uh, the the audience is not. Yeah. And you know, what you'll see is is you end up having a, a video conversation with someone who is actually over here texting. Um, you know, we we did this is uh, less about DJs, but we'd done an event about a month ago with a, a YouTube gamer and came in there, and the event went for a little over an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And in that hour and a half literally only one person chose to be on camera so yeah. and i don't know i mean it's early days for us so it's not it's not clear to me whether that is going to be the norm mm -hmm. or it was just a matter of comfort level with the audience being in their first event yeah there's there's a great point from my experience uh it, it's like it's in majority of cases with any audience it will be the case i wouldn't want to uh to 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 be on to turn on the camera probably if I was just attending a webinar it's just like my personal preference we've done a bunch of webinars in the past so that's why I'm so excited about testing this tool because I used quite a few webinars uh, tools in the past I stopped doing that like a year ago so uh, so getting back to this now and uh, I mean so <laughs> even text questions people are oftentimes confused about doing that so um, yeah, and I mean, it was a bit awkward begin uh, beginning of this session, but I, I mean, I was very upfront and before I, I started this session, um, I, I started this recording and I explained that it's kind of a, a new, fresh new experience here. So I'm trying to show it um, from the perspective of someone who is going to try the platform for the first time. So you already brought up some interesting questions. Uh, just to summarize. What happened here? You, uh, I brought you on stage, and uh, at first you just didn't intentionally. You didn't uh, uh, ask for uh, for to be shown on video, right? Correct. So you can have a control of that. Yeah, I mean, I mean essentially, when I when I you you selected me to be on stage, I mean, it was immediately pulled was pulled on stage, and and I and I chose to. Uh, there was a you know button there that said you know. Uh, uh, you know, I, I can't tell you, it's like speak, you know, uh, it's a, a send a message to the audience or whatever, but, but I, I clicked on that button rather than the camera button and was trying to just initiate a conversation with you via text. And by the way, at any point during this, you can always go off camera and you and I can have a two-way conversation via text, mm -hmm. you know, which I think in many cases, particularly when you think about if we start using the that center 16.9 window uh, to showcase uh, music 
or, or video of any sort. Um, yeah, there's times when, hey, maybe it makes sense for us to make commentary about what's happening in that screen. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, you know what, we just want to let the audience enjoy that content. Mm -hmm. And yet we can still have overlay textual conversation that doesn't interfere with the video, uh, the center, the, the video experience in the center or the audio experience in the center. So the nice thing about the platform, you know, is there's, uh, there's optionality uh, in terms of what, what you want to do. And, and also you, you would give them what your, your use case is, right? Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, we are definitely going to talk about some more use cases here because this is what our audience is mostly interested in, how it can be applied to them. Because I know that you uh, you see quite a few gamers using the platform, for example, right? So yes. it's that is interesting and uh, it's actually great because there is quite a lot to learn in, in that industry. So what do you, we don't have too many people here, by the way. I guess it was... Um, uh, I, uh, I mean, it was uh, my mistake here uh, mentioning that uh, the recording would be available later. <laughs> so um, yeah, but it's it's totally fine. We've got and Corey, thank you for being here too, by the way. Uh, so it's it's just uh, enough to test this. Uh, so um, I want to talk to you about some uh, some of the features that we've got here and some of the use cases. But first, how do you feel about me starting to? Play some media in the background. That's absolutely great, and, the, and then then you get you, you got to think when you play the media in the background. You know, one of the things you want to think about is how loud do you want that media to be? Because if we are if we're on camera when that media is playing, which we can do, um, the the odd the audio level in that center is going to be dropped by about twenty five percent. So you and I can comment over it. If we just go to if we go to uh, uh, to, 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 to live, you know, to, to real time text, um, that audio is up at 100%. So we just show it. Like we start, I think probably the cool thing to do is show the video, um, start the video, and you and I can talk, and then, and, then I'll, and then let's turn off our respective cameras for just a minute or so. Do you propose? I, I want to test how the audio is affected by. Yeah, so what you'll do is you'll end, you'll hit the button in broadcast. It's not going to stop your event. It's just going to it's just going to take you off camera. So I'm going to I'm going to end broadcast. I'm still going to be on stage when I get when you when, when we come back. Let, let's so. do it for around like 50 seconds or so just to see what's happening. Sure. But you guys can still hear me. So I decided to, I actually just posted a text message and then thought uh, you haven't seen me for too long. Corey, all good, thank you for being here. You know, one of the things that the, uh, the audience didn't see, uh, that only you saw, was when I, when I first enabled my camera, yeah. you were given an election. No, but the audience didn't see that. You could see me. You could see who I was. You could preview that I, I look like, you know, I, I might be respectable, you know, and have my clothes on. Um, but, but you're given the option at that point to either accept or decline me and bring me on camera. Yeah. So as the host, you always have uh, control over uh, over who you're bringing on stage and whether you allow them to use video or not on their end. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and this absolutely. is... Uh... This is uh... It's weird. I cannot, it's quite weird. I cannot pause the video. Um, you know what? You need, you're gonna need stop to uh, just, just just hit stop. Media. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That actually uh, is good in a way because uh, it's m like just pausing it may lead to some uh, uh, yeah some sync issues. 
for people watching that. So we don't we want uh, the media to be synced, I guess. How, so how, how, how good is it uh, around like several seconds uh, lag? At worst, yeah. I mean, I obviously, there's. I, I'm. I see a little bit more lag on mobile, but this is. I mean, this is within. You know, this is basically we will. You know, we'll say no le- no latency, but I'll see. You know, second a second or two maybe. Um, you know, uh, and, and typically, you know, when I uh, when I do demos or talk to people, I will ask them. I say, when you got the video running, uh, just hover over uh, the you know the the time. What time are you getting? And just check to check to to match it up, and it's. Uh, it's 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 near real time now. What we're doing right now, that's I mean this is this is obviously this is uh, which is Web RTC, so Web Real Time Communication. Mm-hmm. This is absolutely real time. Mm-hmm. So the funny thing in the industry is, um, and you probably know this well, is a lot of people build their platforms as as live, um, but they're not actually really live. <laughs> they're actually they're actually delayed, you know, by you know five to fifteen seconds. True. Yeah. Um, yeah so we. You know, by the way, back to your, just to digress Mm -hmm. for a second, back Mm -hmm. to your point about pausing media, uh, we're not quite there yet, but I think we, uh, on the, on the product roadmap is, it will be the ability to actually, where you can pause that video and pause it for everybody. Um, you know, you could actually pause the video for yourself, Mm -hmm. uh, but Mm -hmm. that video will still be running in the back. And then if you needed to, if you needed to get back to real time Mm -hmm. where everybody Mm -hmm. else is. You just do a screen refresh, uh, and you, you're not going to lose the event. You'll just come right back to the exact point in time where everybody else is. Makes sense. Um, Makes and sense. Ditto, ditto with if you, um, if you if you find that the as a host the music is is uh, is distracting for what you're trying to say or do. Um, you can also you know uh, use the the the, uh, the 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 audio control on the video to just. Uh, Turn it off. It's it not going to turn it off for the audience. Oh, the audience okay. will oh. still hear it. Okay, so it's uh, okay, so everyone, uh, everyone uh, controls the controls volume the, on their end. On the end. That's correct. And that's correct. So, and it's not going to affect. You know, eventually, where we're going to get to with this, and it's actually, it's a. Uh, there's a little bit of there's a few technical challenges to it. Is the ability to do exactly what you said, where you know, because I think it makes sense. I'm sitting here. You know, in you know, maybe less with music, but certainly with uh, you know certain video process. Hey, I have maybe want to stop that video at a certain point to make a point about what's happening in that scene, mm-hmm. or we'll you know, and just make some commentary and then restart it. So I think there's a strong use case for doing that. Um, just from the where we are with the platform right now, we're not quite there yet. Okay, okay, that's um, that, that's understandable. So tell me a little bit more on live streams. I think that's a really interesting thing here. So we can uh, enter a link to a live stream on YouTube, for example, if it's uh, like a live show or something like that, and uh, kind of have this stream inside a stream on StageHound yes. and have all Absolutely. these features and comments. I did mention it in the newsletter today because I think it's that yet yeah, the, the potential is quite huge there, especially if we've got someone in the team, like a band is performing somewhere and someone in the team is participating in managing these uh, chat. Fred, hello. It's really nice to see you here. Um, so, and by the way, you mentioned that someone actually did that, right? Yeah, we've had well, we had a uh, we've had we, we've had a couple of DJs uh, uh, test it, um, and uh, and then I and uh, I don't know, but probably I don't know. It's been three weeks now. Um, we had a, a woman who was doing a, they were doing a film premiere up in Boston, mm-hmm. and but it was and it was the topic was um, you know maybe not excited for everybody, but it was about infertility, uh, and she had a panel of experts. And so what she did was she actually had, uh, we had, a, you know, a live moderator and audience asking questions. And then we were showcasing the, uh, the, 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 the panel uh, uh, in live using YouTube live mm-hmm. uh, in the center section. Um, and also we've done the same thing with DJ. So you got uh, a DJ who was actually had then a camera, like a camera on you. And then also had a second camera, uh, which was doing the YouTube live right. and then pulling the YouTube live in there so it was kind of it was kind of cool because he he would look up and say things in the in the camera you're in and then the the other the other camera was just kind of it was more of a shot of everything that's going on yeah uh, which yeah. was pretty cool um but super super easy to do so um we you know youtube youtube is super simple like you know one of the things of course that the audience can't see that you saw was when you said play media mm-hmm. you were given you know a, a basically <clears throat> the light box screen came up mm-hmm. and you were given uh, three choices. YouTube. Yeah. 
SoundCloud and Vimeo. So I'm doing uh, You obviously, I assume you chose you chose YouTube when you did that. Mm-hmm. Um, your options there are you can either you can search for something, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so you could have typed in Rihanna or whatever, and it'll it'll pull up nice, beautiful uh, th- thumbnails, and you kind of just scroll through the one you want. Um, you can also paste a URL in there. Um, you can also uh, create a playlist on YouTube or SoundCloud and pay- paste in just the URL uh, for the playlist uh, as well. That's cool. Uh, which is great. Yeah, I mean, I, I've sometimes I've gone there and created a, a two-hour playlist and just you know turn this thing on and let it roll. Um, and then and then for YouTube Live, it's no different. In YouTube Live, it's a matter of you've got YouTube Live going, uh, and it's about just pa- pasting in that URL. And now you've got YouTube Live in there. I mean, we could do that right now. You know, if you were to go over to YouTube, uh, type in Live, uh-huh. and just see what's over there. See something interesting. It could be the eagle, uh, you know, the bald eagle cam, or it could be uh, you know, young Turks or whatever. I mean, I a few weeks ago I was show, showcasing this to uh, a broadcaster here in the U.S. Uh, Univision, and it happened to be was the it was Friday for the Indy 500 race, and I just pulled that right in there, and they were like, "Wow, how did you do that?" <laughs> it, was like, <laughs> it looked like I was pulling a feed from somewhere. That's cool. But it was it was it was super great, and you know, in in, in where this is going, I mean, I. You know, I actually, we could do it I, on my phone. I have a, literally a six, on my iPhone, I have a $6 piece of software um, called Wirecast Go. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can do the free version, but it doesn't do anything. So you really need to spend the six bucks. But 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 the six bucks, I, you know, I sit there and start broadcasting uh, YouTube and throwing YouTube right in here. And the same thing, it's just a matter of pasting a URL in your, in your live. And where this is going I think it's interesting because, uh, it, you know, supposedly it was going to happen this month, but I think it, you know, it, they haven't, uh, YouTube is going to be releasing a, uh, an app, not unlike what you, um, these, these people may, may be familiar with, the audience may be familiar with uh, a Periscope or Facebook Live. Um, YouTube is going to have a very similar product that allows you to basically uh, do the same thing that Periscope or Facebook Live is. But the nice thing about what they're doing is it's not it's not trapped within a, a closed garden. Mm-hmm. So if you think about Facebook Live, great thing is you're on Facebook Live and they're going to their their algorithm is actually going to promote live video and yep. and they've got obviously you've got huge reach. Periscope, yeah. but it's but it's gonna it's only going to appear in Facebook. Facebook wants yeah to to be all yeah, on Facebook, Facebook wants it on Facebook, yeah. and and that's why I say closed garden. Mm-hmm. You know, it's the same thing with with Periscope. Your Periscope video will either appear on Periscope or will appear, you know, uh, you know, in there, and they're, they're not completely. Yeah, so it's going to be in embeds on the on the website, right? Twitter, Twitter. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so you know, but hmm? with YouTube, yeah. what's going to be interesting? Is is the creators? You know, you guys as creators are going to have a lot more flexibility. In what you what you can do with that video and where that video is going to appear. It doesn't just have to appear on YouTube. Yeah, that's so, yeah, that, that, that's yeah. great point. I just uh, by the way, so uh, and and so uh, didn't mean to interrupt you, but so uh, finally we've got someone joining us. And guys, please uh, feel free to use the the chat at least uh, to to ask questions like what the hell is going on right here and what we're talking about or whatever. So uh, the more action we've got here on the screen, the better because I'm also recording everything as a screencast. So what you just mentioned is, is brilliant because when uh, YouTube, like with YouTube Live uh, and with even Google Hangouts and there are some limitations where the you, you may not be fully happy with the interface you've got. You want real-time chat, you want, you want some other features, but then you've got this live stream in an environment which is not optimal for real-time conversations. This is what I've been seeing, uh, at least. So, uh, random, but t- tell me, what about these em- emojis? How do you pronounce them? Em- well, say that again? Oh, the, oh, the emoji, the emojis? Yeah, but it's not emoji no, no, here. No, no, it's- it's not G. Well, what I've what I've got here is I. By the way, I don't know if you realize this, Andrew, but you're you're in control of these. I, I actually have. I'm set up also because um, I, I'm an admin moderator. I also have control, but these things don't just appear on the screen because because the person did something. They appear on the screen because I clicked on them. So mm-hmm. right now I'm gonna. Hello, DJ Trippy Dog Smiles, and so you have the same control. So I can add emotes. And say this is I love this man I just but, I dig this. But if I do several, they will just pop up on the screen still, so I can. They'll pop up. 
up. So I, I make a joke, and I don't know if you you've ever saw this or it was part of um, a European culture, but back in the uh, back in the '90s, we had a very popular TV show on um, on VH1 called uh, VH1 Pop Up Video, and all these little comments and things would pop up on the screen. It was basically trivia mm -hmm. that they would overlay on top of the video. Uh, same way in this is, and I, I just clicked on that and pushed you up there. If you click on any of those emojis that are appearing in that bottom yeah. right screen, you're in control. So you can promote any comment, uh, anybody who, who just uh, uh, joined. So uh, Corey's already joined and left, but I'm going to click on it again just to demonstrate. There is Corey Wolf joined. And you can give them a verbal shout out at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, when you're on larger events, it's probably not something that you yeah, want to focus on. Yeah, because there will be lots of stuff going on here, probably. There's, well, you just you're interacting with the audience. You're interacting. In this case, you're interacting with me. Yeah. Um, and you're less focused on that. I feel fairly comfortable with the platform. So every now and then, I just go down there and click on one just for fun. But for what we do have in here, as I reference, is 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 people can set up. We can set up anybody. Uh, it doesn't just have to be one person. It can be multiple people as admin or moderators. And this allows them to do several things. It allows them to do everything you can do. So they can uh, set up the media. They can play the media. Right. Um, they, can, um, uh, <clears throat> they can discard questions if they see questions uh, that are not appropriate mm -hmm. or they don't want in there. Um, they can promote uh, these emojis or emoticons uh, up onto the center screen. Um, and the other thing... Which again, this is in the interface. Uh, the audience is not going to see this, but Andrew, I, I you know, if, I'm going to point you to it. If you go down into the this area uh, below the big center window, uh, in the in the in the in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, in, in the bottom middle, uh, there's all public chat in yeah. there. Um, you but know, it's visible to, to but it's visible to everyone, right? Oh, everybody can see it, but what they can't do is if you if you actually scroll your your mouse yeah. or your cursor over a comment, yeah. what you'll see there is you'll see three little buttons on the end. Mm -hmm. One is a square with an arrow in it. And this is to the promote. second is, okay, it, please it, keep a, going. is a person. Mm -hmm. And the third is a trash can. If you were to click on uh, the the square with a uh, with the arrow that would actually bring me up on stage mm -hmm. from a public chat comment. If I wanted to know more about you um, before I brought you on Well, now this is embarrassing, but you guys see it uh, because I'm recording my screencast, but <laughs> I got my internet connection got broken apparently. So it's uh, cool in a way, we, uh, the show must go on. Uh, yeah, so we, uh, looks like we are, we are good. I'm just refreshing the page and uh, we'll be just fine. Apologies for that. But it's an interesting uh, uh, case as well. How quickly we, will we be able to restore it after my connection got fixed? Um, so, to, so you can run a quarter, you know, a really orderly event. Uh, wait, um, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I disappeared for a minute. You did. Where'd yeah. you go? So, did, so you you mean that? Oh, it's it's just my internet connection. It got broken, which I mean I didn't well, expect it. I just but lost it, you on camera. But it was really interesting because I and I was just since I'm recording the whole thing uh, here locally. <laughs> I was, I've been commenting on this. So, do you mean that? The actual event didn't you know, you stop. Can always type to me. You can. For some reason, we lost him. Where is he? Uh, you guys. Oh, he's down here typing in a. Yes. Uh, um. Uh, what is it? Type in your comments or ask a question. So, I'm just trying to understand if you can hear me or not. There we go. Andrew, I've lost you on camera for some reason. You okay, here, okay, but then, uh, can you hear me uh, at least? Can you invite anyone to the stage who is logged in? Yes, absolutely. Um, now, there comes Andrew. So, Unpaved Highway, um, I'm not sure what your real name is, but Unpaved Highway, um, yeah, you can invite any anyone on stage who's logged in. 
Now, and I, but by the way, that's a, a, a good question for a couple of reasons. One is, is the way we've designed this platform uh, was for it to be really frictionless. So anybody, unless, unless the host chooses to disable that, by default, anybody, you just send them the link they're going to come here and they they can watch the, watch what's going on. I like that, yeah. But the minute the minute they're going to do something, interact with the platform. So if they're going to appear on camera, if they're going to post anything in in the public chat area, or ask a question, or vote, or add emojis, any anything that's participatory, we want them to log in and authenticate using either Facebook or Twitter, mm -hmm. and eventually we'll add Google too. Um, and those are the three main authentication platforms that are out there, at least for consumer. Um, and so they're logged in. Um, once someone's logged in, there are basically th three three primary ways of getting a person on stage. One is if you look under right under Andrew's box, it'll say something about ask him a question. You can ask him a question there. Do that. In which case, go ahead, Andrew. No, no, please. I, I'm just saying do that. Ask me questions. Yeah, please keep going. So if you ask him a question there, it'll say ask, ask Andrew a question or ask a question. That question will then appear directly below him. And you as audience can vote on the question. And you either like it or dislike it. On our side, it basically looks the same, except we can either answer it or discard it. If we hit answer, boom. It brings that person on stage to, to the spot where I am. Uh, so this is a, I'm 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 actually sitting in the guest uh, in the guest spot, and Andrew is in the host spot. Now the second way to do it is you can bring someone up on stage. You see something interesting. Uh, you want to you want to bring them on stage. You can bring someone up on stage directly from uh, from public chat. So unpaved highway. We may do that for you in just a second, and then I'll ask a question. You can bring me back if you want, Andrew. And then the third way. Um, which you can't see right now. Mm -hmm. What you can't see right now is, um, is 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 bringing someone up by favoriting them. So if you actually add someone as a favorite, uh, they will appear in your favorites list, and you can bring them up on at any time. So that would be think about use case for that. It's um, your uh, well, you, it's, it's Andrew, and you know you have four guests that you want to bring on stage today is you've gone and, and pre-favored them. They're then not subject to having a peer voted question to get up on stage. Right. They're not subject to even posting a comment in public chat. You've just favored them. And because you favored them, you can bring them up on stage at any time. Yeah. yeah. Um, so like yeah. in my, my list, I have maybe eight favorites right now. Mm -hmm. um, if they're not, if they're not live, you'll see that they're not live. You, got, you can have favorites and they're just not there today. If they're there, that square box with the arrow will appear yeah. and you can bring them up on stage. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so go ahead, Andrew. Uh, because uh, it's not it's visible it's right now, visible this right list now. with yes. favorites. Uh, favorites. When uh, you are not on stage, I see this list of all my favorites right here, right in the yeah. uh, in in this box, and then I, I can choose that. So yeah, I just seen that, but uh, I'm just you know commenting for those watching to watching the recording that because it's not visible here right now because we've got you on stage. So I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, yeah, yeah, what you can show is well, you know what might be kind of cool to do is um, we can end the conversation. Or I'll, maybe I'll end it. Either party can end the conversation, by the way. Uh, you know, maybe end the conversation, and then what you're going to see appear in this box where I'm at, mm -hmm. it'll say no active fan. Yeah. And then that's where you would click to see who your favorites are. Okay, uh, uh, before I do that, and I want to test it, I will bring you back later on. Uh, you mentioned that uh, everyone participating can vote, up, upvote the questions, right? Correct. But I don't see the amount of votes on the questions. Oh, do um, you don't see the vote. So from your view, um, we actually did that on purpose. So we actually had that in there where people could see who whose questions were voted on and how many and all that. And and uh, it just it creates it creates more distraction and controversy. I, I see really that. Wanted, what we really want to do, when you think about an event this size, it's not a big deal, right? But when you talk about really scaling this up, where you have you know thousands of people in an, in a live event is you've got a flood of questions. Um, there's no sorting mechanism. So you want you want the fans and the audience to be able to, to vote on it. Right. And 
and, and vote on it very quickly. So this thing moves. The voting thing will just start flying in and moving in very sort of hot or not. Do you like it? Do you don't? You like it? You don't. Mm-hmm. And then we actually use an algorithm and some matching to bring up the very the, the highest voted questions. You're right. Um, and 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 present that to you. So at any given time, you're only going to see that you will see the top voted question. And you can eat, you're not obligated to answer it, by the way. It may be something personal. maybe something you're just not interested in answering. Yeah. And you discard it. And so you can discard, 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 discard. Oh, got that one. Love that one. And in and, and, and that way, you're always in control. But the idea here was to give this, uh, to make this uh, uh, really easy so you're not overwhelmed. And, and, and you can see this on other platforms where people start – you know, whether it's uh, Facebook Live or Periscope or you just – there's a Twitter q and I mean, tons of questions coming yeah. in and you literally watch the, the you know, the, the host sitting there and their eyes are blinking because they're trying to read. Exactly, what's exactly, going. exactly. I, I was – yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was about to tell you because one of the biggest frustrations uh, I had on the, with the webinars uh, in the past is that there is a chat – People ask questions and there is like no way to find these questions later on unless uh, someone monitors it for you. Some Sometimes I did it on some bigger webinars. Bigger, I mean uh, 100, 250, maybe 200 right. people. I'm not saying I've never hosted webinars with 1,000 people. Thank God. I mean, I, 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 I wouldn't want that, to be honest. So... Yeah. Uh, and it was so frustrating because uh, you just need to scroll just as you explained and, and uh, try to find something and it's it's very confusing. So I like that essentially how I see it, you uh, separated the chat from the question sections and with this uh, voting system, uh, I as a host see only the best stuff. So this, uh, like, this platform is really suitable for ask me anything kind of thing, right? Well, yeah, well, that and honestly, that's where. Well, I, I should give you a little, just a little historical on you know, kind of how this thing evolved. But uh, the first step on it was, you know, I had one of our, one of our founders, you know, and our head of product, uh, Matt Colson. Uh, he was trying to solve a problem, which was a, a, a synchronous uh, a, a synchronous media issue. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So he he was he loved music. He still does. He's a huge music fan. Um, he had a girlfriend who lived in Southern California. He lived in Northern California. They like to listen to music together. How would they do that? Well, they would go buy a CD. They would get on the phone and they go one, two, three, push. Yeah. And he went, hey, there's a better way to do this. <laughs> you know, and we could do this with technology. He's been a lot of time working on that. And, you know, and, and you guys, you'll, you'll know this uh, coming from, you know, uh, from, you know, from your background. But what he re- originally started was a product uh, not unlike what you saw with uh, Turntable FM mm-hmm. or, uh, or Sound Drop. That's so, but the thing was, is the idea is like, of course, it was him and his girlfriend, but it was like, hey, once you think about that, no, it's, it's, it's the artist or the creator sharing their content with a community uh, and, and creating community around content. So that yeah. was the first step. The second step, you know, and you know, when Turntable and those guys came in and said, like, yeah, yeah, we don't want to go do the exact same thing. And so what they looked at was what problem can we solve? And it was exactly the problem you just pinpointed, which was a one-to-many communication problem. So when you think about, you know, you and I could, you know, you and I could be doing this right now, just you and I talking and probably bring in four people uh, into, uh, into Google Hangouts or Skype uh, or, you know, there's a couple of different things out there. But when you try to do something at scale, it breaks down very quickly. Yeah. So you want to put some organization and structure around it. So the first thing we did was, hey, let's do something. Let's think about things that were one. What was good about what? What, what is good about Reddit AMAs is they allow that vote, a voting of questions. Mm-hmm. Um, it's static. There's UX IU yeah. problems. There's a host of problems with that platform. Um, you know, it's not a truly slide synchronous platform like this. But but smart in what they were doing there. And then looking at Twitter Q&As and looking at this whole Q&A sort of thing. And so um, we added that as a, as, 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 a, as a product feature. And in that, we felt we need to solve the problem as it relates to uh, you know, giving uh, the, the host uh, a coherent, easy view to choose questions uh, that they want to answer. Um, and, and, and then along the way, what we found out is, is people will uh, – fan-voted questions are great, but to your point – when people do that and uh, you start putting questions in public chat, mm-hmm. it gets really unruly once you get over more than 200 people. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely, just like, absolutely. First of all, the, 
even if you throttle, even if you throttle or control the chat, it's still moving too fast. Now, what's nice about what what we built here, um, and it goes back to how do you get people on stage, is you may very well see something in this public chat yeah. you want to come revisit later. Because mm-hmm. you know, what we found is people will submit questions in the you know ask Andrew a question button, and they'll submit the questions that way. But they will a lot of times we'll see a question pop up. Uh, you know, in here in the in the public chatter. In fact, unpaved highway. Can you invite anyone to the stage who logged in? Actually, a really good question. He didn't submit it for fan voting, but you know what? You or I, you know, you, you're the host. You see that as interesting. You could actually answer that question verbally, or you could bring that person on stage uh, again through a question submitted in public chat. So it gives you some again it gives you some options on terms of how you want to get people. Oh, gosh, I didn't do it. Eric, sorry for that. <laughs> it was too early. Let's bring Craig <laughs> back right now. And uh, mm, yeah, so we are, Craig's really sorry for that, but we're testing the feature with the favorites. So I'm ending the conversation right now. Um, and no active fan. I'm clicking here. And I see my list of favorites. Um, Eric, thank you for asking the question, by the way, I really appreciate that, and uh, yeah, so here we go, live, I'm back, I'm back live I, I just literally clicked without intending to click, it was completely accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, we, we, we will bring you on stage in a, in a minute, <laughs> you might have to ask another question, but, uh, uh, yeah. but no, that, that was good. Uh, oh, he has no video. You know what? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You, no. don't, you, don't, you don't have to have video. In fact, it might be interesting to show how you communicate. Um, we find, uh, and we kind of mentioned this earlier, and I think a little before you arrived, is a lot of people, they, you know, either it's a bad hair day, they're shy, or they don't, in your case, you don't have video. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't need to have video to come on stage. Um, what we see time and time again is the host is 100% comfortable uh, being on stage and being on camera, audience isn't generally, at least not at first. And so what happens is uh, either the host can also choose to just do text, text to text, text to text, and go back and forth that way, or the host stays on camera and you communicate via text. And so, again, optionality is key. Yeah. And, and I, yeah. you know, one of the one of the key learnings that we're and, and, and things may change, yeah. but one of the key learnings we learned so far is that not everybody wants to be on camera. Yeah. Uh, but 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 everybody, if they've submitted a question, you know, or those sort of things, they do want to communicate with you, and they want to have a make a personal connection and have conversation. Um, but that doesn't necessarily have to be by video. And, and just to and to to clarify that, uh, that a little bit, if I choose, if someone, I choose and someone and click the answer, yes, click the answer. I see my. I, see. I, I hear the echo. No, it disappeared. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if I click answer, I see the text uh, instead of the video. And uh, you, Eric, in this case, if I, uh, I mean, we are running out of time, so I will not do that. But if uh, if I did, you could just type in something different, and I can even turn off the, my video and also type in my box. So it's like two chat boxes essentially, kind of. Uh, happening on, on, on the screen. I'm not even sure how to describe that, but but that's pretty cool. When I really see how it works, when I'm into it, I, I like right now, I really want to host a big event. <laughs> um, so I know that you've got a lot more to share, but uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, the session, I, I, I brought up this idea to try to limit it to 40 minutes because just, just you know, for, you know why. Sure. Uh, so, um, uh, do you mind like a quick feedback from me? And and yeah. So sorry for interrupting you. I I really want to hear more from you. But here I just want to slowly start, you know, wrapping it up. Uh, after forty minutes of playing with this, and with this was my first proper broadcast with the platform. I I get it. So uh, it's totally fine that no one uh, donated. I'm, I, it's okay, guys. I'm, I'm I'm fine with that. But that feature is pretty interesting because I know that it's uh, with Stripe integ- integration, it's very easy to do. So for musicians, it's uh, it's a big thing. Not just be being a, uh, like asking for 
uh, donations or, or money, but also have an, an easy to use system in place to do that. So yeah, I know that you may have some questions on that. You yeah, I, I'll um, we can get to that. Oh gosh, you did that. Yeah, you, you didn't have to. Wow, this looks pretty cool. Now that yeah, you did. made my day. I just that, by the way, that took me, it was integrated with Stripe. That took me like two seconds because I've already done it once. Yeah. So it saved my information. Exactly. Just one exactly. That's why I left. That's nice. Yeah, Stripe. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Yeah, I, when I saw the integration with Stripe, I was absolutely loved it because I use it all the time. So it's connected to my phone number. And I mean, there are lots of places use uh, this Stripe integration. So you, I mean, if you have a paid somewhere else with that, it's just so easy to do that. So that's really cool. And I appreciate you showing how it's um, how it works here. Um, so uh, I mean, the the concept is clear. It's just it may be slightly confusing for newcomers. I think so. As we've seen, like people may be asking questions in the chat and so on. Uh, my like just I will be honest. Personally, I'm still not fully sure about the emoji emojis. Em emojis here okay. because uh, it's just a bit too too many options so i can ask questions i can uh, chat that's clear that's kind of the the core of it and that's i mean that's fun but i don't i'm not sure how i think that with bigger with bigger audiences it's used much more often so that's cool yeah. i i see the value i just like on on a business webinar i guess i wouldn't uh, expect well to yeah i think for business webinar is not as important but what, what's going to be interesting particularly for large-scale events and for people who are who are testing content is what we see there what's really cool in a big event is you'll literally watch the emoji thing light up with everybody, everybody clapping or everybody giving a thumbs up. All that information is tied back to that real time event. So if you think about it, if you were playing an album of music after post event, we can go in and say, look, here is where based on the, the emoji stream tied back to the real time event, we can show them graphically exactly where the high points are. It's not about, you know, surveying, Hey, which song did you like best? We can see yeah. it because it, you know, we can also see where the crickets are, where there's dead, dead zones. Yeah. That's, that's where nobody's that, that's a whole different. So thing. I think there's some, some interesting analytical data uh, for, for artists and, and performers and things like that, that we can provide back, back to them. That's brilliant. That's, I didn't, somehow I didn't think about that. Well, I mean, it just makes absolutely like it's so much sense. Keep it. I, I, I love that so seriously. This is uh, invaluable information, which is so, I mean, uh, yeah, Facebook, I believe, uh, tries to pick some interesting um, moments in the video right now. They're introducing some algorithms, so people are trying to crack that. But the best way to figure out which moments of the videos are the most interesting is to do it through by asking uh, people to, to, to do something. <laughs> yeah, Eric, yeah. all good with no tipping, please. Yeah. Um, cool. So uh, I think we can actually wrap it up. We are 45 minutes into the session. I really want to keep it to around that. Thank you so much for the for answering my question and and bearing with my internet connection issues and uh, uh, the whole like experimental format. Uh, and thank you everyone who have been here. Uh, I'm including all the information links and additional stuff in the description to this recording to so everyone who is uh, watching this uh, off, oh, not offline, gosh, like not in real time, but the recording. Craig, anything else to add? No, other than I just want to thank, uh, I want to thank you, obviously, I want to thank you for uh, taking time to play with the platform to introduce your audience uh, uh, to, to, to what we're doing. I really do appreciate that. Um, would love any any feedback, anything you guys, any comments, whatever. Um, route it through Andrew. Andrew can pass it on to me. Uh, and also want to thank the audience members uh, for coming in, uh, participating, watching what we're doing, and and certainly hope uh, and, you know as you move forward, uh, you, know, you use our platform. Uh, again, you can always reach out to me as well, uh, and happy to answer any questions or help you in any way I can to uh, you know help you build your business. Much appreciated. Thank you so much and. I'm going to click that end event button in a second. All good with that? I think we're, we're can be considered done. Yeah, we're done. And I want to thank again. Thanks, thank everybody. You. Have yeah. a great day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.
Yeah, by the way, I do remember that I haven't stopped recording yet. Um, so thank you all for watching this stuff. I hope the video is, is all right. And I hope it was helpful. I like I like the platform, but I would prefer someone to show me around stuff like that because you can see it's not exactly 100% obvious how it's all organized there from uh, at first it seems a bit confusing but when it's explained it makes a lot more sense these gamification elements and this ability to stream music uh, as in Turntable FM all the likes and uh, the tipping feature and the Q&A separated from the chat uh, that all seems very interesting to me. I recommend you giving it a try. I think it's really fitting for entertainment industry. So uh, while it's definitely possible to do something uh, like a business webinar, this thing should work really well for an artist. So I hope to see some use cases from you. Send me the links as usual, you know, andrew at wispin.co or at metaandrew on Twitter. Uh, just uh, contact me if you ever use this tool. I will spread the words about your session. We'll try to uh, be there myself when you're hosting something. Live uh, events uh, have the future thanks to the platforms we see and all the, the developments on the major platforms too. So let's Let's jump on it. Let's let's use the opportunity to do really cool live events as the public is more prepared for that. Yeah, so thank you once again and see you soon.